What's up kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Dark Previews and in today's video I'm going to take you through some of my favorite plays on this upcoming four game slate of the Olympics men's basketball. We got Brazil versus Japan, Greece versus Australia, Spain and Canada, and Germany versus France. So I've got a few picks from each game. Not sure how I'm going to piece it all together but I've done the research and I'm here to share you some of the insights that I've got. Starting with Japan and Brazil. So both teams zero and two so far in the tournament. Whoever wins this game does have a slim chance of progressing through. Japan, most recently, they were robbed against France, whereas Brazil, underwhelming against Germany. So the first play that I wanted to talk through, well, before I get there, let me share my screen and we can go through it all together. Bet365 doesn't have the markets available just yet, but one of my other sports books does. Now, this is called Sports Bet. I think it looks quite similar and the markets are very similar to FanDuel for those of you in the US. We'll go through sports bet today, and it gives us an early indication of what the lines are going to look like for these players. So Brazil are the favorites in this game. Looking at player props, though, first person I wanted to talk through is Rui Hachimura. That's a very basic pick, right? So his line set at 21.5. Now, it's the most straightforward play so far in this Olympic Games. He scored 20 points in game one, 24 points in game two before he got ejected with plenty of time to spare. So he was killing France. It's a very easy pick to say take his over 21.5, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to be getting on. I know I'm a bit on the fence on whether I'm going to take it from Rui Hachimura, um, but I don't think it's, it's a really bad play. Another play that I do like, though, um, if you head over to the points and rebounds tab, is Josh Hawkinson. Over 22.5 points and rebounds. Now, I do like his rebound prop, but that is quite juiced to the gills. But if you're someone playing on the fantasy apps, uh, apps Josh Hawkinson over 8.5 rebounds is a great line to take. Uh, but for me, because I'm sports betting, the 22.5 rebounds and points and rebounds is the way that I'm looking. And... Pretty much this is how his Olympics have gone so far. 13 and 16 points in the two games thus far, 11 and 8 rebounds. So I'll do the mathematics for you. It's more than 22.5 points and rebounds in each of these games. Now, Brazil, they gave up high rebound numbers to the three German centers in their last game. Um, six rebounds in 16 minutes. Daniel Tice had six rebounds in 24 minutes. And Voigtman had eight rebounds in about 20 minutes. So they're giving up a lot of boards to the bigs. Hawkinson's the only big that Japan has. He should see about 36 minutes of action in this game. Um, might even look at just taking his rebounds for even 9.5, 10 boards. I'm pretty sure I'll get pretty good value on that. Uh, but Josh Hawkinson, he has been scoring at a pretty consistent rate. And this is minus 103 for 9.5 or 10 rebounds. So I might even take him for that. Um, but I think Josh Hawkinson's a good look. Another one, and this may not be a popular play on the books, purely because he sucked absolute ass in his last game. But I'm looking at Utah Watanabe, over 12.5 points. It is at minus 128 at the moment. Um, so odds pretty juiced, but this is a good one for fantasy players. I might have considered taking him for 15. But why am I liking Utah in this game? Well, he was a non-factor against France. He played 41 minutes in that game, and he couldn't get his shot off. He only attempted four shots in 41 minutes. Now, he's no stranger to this. He often goes through these slumps where he doesn't take many shots. Looking at last, uh, the FIBA World Cup, he had two quiet games in that. But in both of the following games, he responded quite well. So he had two games. I think he had four points in one game and maybe five points in another. Very similar. Played a lot of minutes, didn't get a lot of shots up. In the following games. From those ones, he scored 20 plus points in both instances. So in this Olympics, he scored 16 points in the opening game against Germany. I was happy to take his line anywhere up to about 15.5, but we see it at 12.5. So I'll most likely play this over and I'll probably take him for 15 points as well, but we'll see where I land. So in terms of this Brazilian team though, yeesh. They have been trash. They have been inconsistent. So speaking of consistency, this Brazilian team has none of it. The players aren't consistent in terms of their output, points, rebounds, or assists. The players aren't even consistent in their minutes. So Caboclo, for example, he's usually their most potent offensive weapon, but he's struggled with foul trouble in both games so far in the Olympics. I think 11 and 13 minutes is all he's been able to get. He's predicted He was predicted to be the top scorer from this team. So no consistency from the Brazilian team. So I ain't touching none of them. 
So jumping into the next game, it's Australia versus Greece. Australia, they're one and one. They're fighting for a spot in the knockout stage, whereas Greece, they're zero and two despite the strong play of Giannis. Australia are favorites in this game. The line is at five and a half points. Uh, Greece basically needs to win this game by more than 10 points to have, have even a chance to progress. But let's get into the player props. What are we liking? So the first one here is there's a play on Giannis. So in the last game, Giannis versus Spain, I did take his under, which cashed. This particular game, line at 28.5, minus 105 odds. I'm taking Giannis over 28.5 points. Now, he's done all that he can so far in this playoff, scoring 34 and 27 points in the two games so far in the group stage. He shot 64 and 70% from the field, and I love the matchup for this one. So being from Australia, I'm very well in know of this Australian team. I know what they're good at and what they're not. And what they're not good at is defending people like Giannis. The power forward position is the weakest position for this Australian team. They have no one on this roster that stands a chance against Giannis. They have Jock at the five, who's decent on the international level, and they have a lot of guards and wings in the rotation. So looking at how Australia have been giving up points, there's a lot of players attacking the basket with success. Most recently against Canada, we saw Dylan Brooks and RJ Barrett. They did a lot of damage attack in the rim. They both covered their points line with ease, and no one in the game does this better than Giannis. So in a must-win game, I think we see Giannis put together his best performance of the tournament. I'm also looking at maybe taking his 35-plus points as a ladder play. We'll see where we go. Uh, but someone else on this Greece roster that I'd be interested at in looking at um, for this particular game, Giannis is going to be the man today. Looking at my Aussies, my Australian team, the play that I'm looking at here is for Paddy Mills. And I like his over 2.5 three-pointers made. It's minus 104 odds. I'm considering taking him for four and five as well. But Paddy, he had a tough night against Canada. He shot one from five from deep. Prior to that game, Paddy had covered this line in four consecutive international games. He has a much better matchup in this one. Greece, they should do a good job limiting Josh Giddy in the lane and even Jock Landau down low. Paddy's due for a big game, and this matchup suits. So outside of Paddy, there wasn't too many Australian players that I like. Jock Landau, for example, has been killing it lately in the past few games, points and rebounds. His line hasn't moved despite the strong performance. And Greece, they have some bodies inside to slow Jock Landau down. And if Giannis is going to be banging on the rim all game, there's a chance he finds himself in a bit of foul trouble. So the Jock Landau side, it does scare me a little bit. If we look at Josh Giddy, his points line, it's come down to 15.5. It was at 17.5 in the last game against Canada. Despite scoring 19 points, his line has dropped to 15.5. So if you're backing somebody purely just because how they've played, Josh Giddy is going to be someone that you hammer the over on. That does concern me a little bit when the books know how well this player has been playing, but yet they still drop the line. I probably lean to the over for Josh Giddy, but it's not something I want to play with. His rebounds and assist line, super high. I think they're at 7.5 for both of them. That's not something that I want to fuck with right now. So for Australia, I'm probably just looking at Patty Mills. And for Greece, I'm looking at Giannis. Before we get to the rest of the picks, I ask that you like the video to show some support and let me know in the comment section which country are you watching this from. It is the Olympics after all. Show some national pride. Let me know where you're watching this video from. Also, another reminder about the VIP experience where I share every bet I play, straight bets, parlays, bitch-ass parlays, and value plays across all sports. I'm gearing up for a massive NBA season, so I'm running a 75% off promo. For all the OGs of YouTube who've been supporting me along the way, I am limiting this to the first 50 people that join who are looking to get out of the hood. Links and the promo code are in the video description and in the pinned comment. And there's no pressure if this isn't in the budget, right? My daily videos of my insights and my free picks will remain very much the same. Uh, also, if you're interested in getting a week free of VIP and you're from the US, send me a DM on Instagram and we can negotiate a deal where you scratch my back and then I scratch yours. So let's continue on. So in the next game, we're looking at Canada versus Spain. I think Spain would be the more desperate team in this one. They're currently tied with Australia with a one-on-one -on -one record, whereas Canada are cruising at the moment. They're sitting 2-0. Um, haven't been blowing teams out, but they have been getting wins regardless. So the first player that I wanted to look through here is Santi Aldama. 
Now, I've bet on Santi Aldama both games so far, and he's paid me every single time. He's been scoring quite well. Um, he's been absolute bucket so far in this tournament for Spain, and he's got a relatively good matchup against Canada, who are littered wings and guards. They actually size up very similar to Australia. Now, against Australia, Aldama scored 27 points on him. So he's cut a line of 18.5 points in both games so far. The only concern for me is it feels like it's too obvious of a pick for me. So it's a real lean for me at the moment to take Santi Aldama. I'm sure other cappers out there will be looking at him. I don't think it's such a bad bet, but sometimes if it's too good to be true, a lot of the times it is. Now, the next pick, I can assure you that nobody else is going to be talking about is this guy, Willie Hernan Gomez, over 15.5 points. I'm also considering just running a parlay of 15 points and maybe four rebounds. You get very similar odds. But I'm ultimately looking at Willie Hernan Gomez to have a strong game here. Now, he's gone under 15 points in both games so far in this Olympics, 14 points against Australia and 11 against Greece. This is his easiest matchup that he's had so far. He's got a size and weight advantage against the Canadian bigs. For example, Jock Landau, he gave the Canadians the business in their last matchup. And I have a feeling that big Willie can do the same. So uh, if I was a bit of straight bet, it would be Willie, but I might run a parlay here of 15 points and four boards. We'll see where I land. For those of you who sign up to the VIP experience, you'll get to see it all. So don't worry about where my thoughts at. The last one, I'm looking at running a BAP here and happy to share this one with you. I'm looking at a couple of things. The first, I'm looking at two players. I'm looking at Dylan Brooks and RJ Barrett. Now I'll let you know what the play is going to be. 15 points for RJ Barrett. 10 points for Dylan Brooks, four rebounds for RJ Barrett. What this comes down to, $2.10, that comes to plus 110. So it's a plus money play here. Now, both of these dudes have overperformed so far in the tournament. I'm running it as a bitch-ass parlay with some softer lines just in case we see some regression. So these two guys have been killing it, whereas SGA, for example, he hasn't been meeting his line. If SGA has a big game in this one, RJ Barrett and Dylan Brooks, 15 and 10. I can definitely see that happening in, in what should be a very close game here. So I think um, that's another play that we got. Outside of that, there's no other straight bets that I'm liking. Obviously, SGA has been playing very well. Uh, he's been playing good, but not well enough to cover his line. So I'm not willing to take a bet on that. Um, and for the Spaniards, I think Sergio Lul, for example, he's been playing very well, but this is a tough matchup for him. So I'm making a pass on him. Lorenzo Brown, he's been getting the assists, uh, but I don't know if I can, he can rack up enough assists against his Canadian team. So and Gomez is probably one that I'm going to run. Santiago Dama, that's going to be a popular play. And I'm going to be running my bitch ass parlay. So we'll see where we land. Jumping into the last game, it's Germany versus France. And out of all of the games that are on the slate, this is probably the best one to watch. But this is going to be on 5 a.m. my time. So I'm not going to be up early enough to watch it. But whoever wins this game is going to win Group B. France, they nearly lost to Japan. Whilst Germany, they've been cruising. Two double-digit wins for the Germans. France, they do have the size advantage. But at the same time, Germany's got some NBA quality bigs on the inside as well. So looking at player props, the first one that I'm feeling pretty good about actually is around Franz Wagner. He's been playing quite well so far in this Olympics, but I'm looking at taking him under 19 and a half points. This is a close to a plus money play. Um, it's minus 103. So the odds are great here for Franz. Now he's scored 22 and 17 points so far in the two games in the Olympics. He's covered this line in two out of his last five international games. Now he's the kicker. Both games where he's covered this points line have been against Japan, one in the prep game and one in the Olympics. And Japan lacks size on the inside. They've only got one big guy. So Franz driving and attacking the rack, it's easy money against Japan. But against all the other teams he's played, hasn't been able to score 20 plus points. Rudy and Wemby, they're going to be protecting that rim all night. I do like Germany to cover and win this game, but I see Mo Wagner, Andres Obbs, Dennis Schroeder carrying more of an offensive load. So baiting France on this one, this next play, it's probably not going to be the most popular play on there, but I'm looking at taking Nicholas Batum over his three-point line, um, over 1.5. Now this fuck let us down the last time, but I'm willing to roll the dice on him again. His minutes are great, 30 plus minutes in each game so far. He went one from five from deep, in that last game that he played where, where, where I bet on him. And with that type of volume, I'd happily take the over 1.5. So I looked at some plays for Wemby, um, but his lines are just so damn high. I think this could be a game where he finally explodes. 
and we're because we yet to see the best of him um, in the Olympics so far. But at the same time, they're not willing to throw some throw down some money based on a gut feel. Rudy Gobert ain't nobody gonna have some fun betting on him. Uh, Dennis Schroeder is one that I looked at. I think his points could be a good look, um, but I did feel confident in just fading Franz. Take Franz unders instead of Dennis overs because, like I said, there's a couple of players I think that could overperform for Germany if they're going to get the win. I just don't think Franz is going to be one of them. But that's all i got for you today, lads. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are. For those of you who joined my VIP, I salute you. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.